Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-35. The last episode featured the party escaping from Phoenix in a pid wagon along with a new addition to their group. The waif Karina had been accepted into the party and had already proven herself as she caught a flying fragile parcel from the farmer filled with healing potions. Once aboard ship, they quickly discovered that the waif was a young woman who had been hiding her assets quite well. We rejoined the group as they finished changing clothes. Hey, what is this? questioned Fargus Stoutheart as he pulled for Lothar's armor out of the bag. The others stopped dressing and watched as the ranger pulled out a leather corset with a shoulder guard and greaves. A note tucked into the buckle was addressed to Karina. Fargus handed it over to the young woman who teared up as she read the missive. The group watched silently as she examined the expensive-looking leather armor. Well, put it on. You don't want to go adventuring in just your clothes, remarked Cabe Silvertongue. Karina looked bewildered as the others looked at each other. Sister Elaine asked her if she was familiar with the armor, and the woman shook her head no. Fargus chuckled, which garnered an angry look from her, but he raised his hands. We all have to learn. It is easy, he said as he took the armor from her. The group instructed her on how to wear the armor and adjusted the straps after it was put on. Her ample chest, which had been hidden from them previously, could no longer be disguised as the corset pushed it up in all the right places. The party stepped back and looked at her, which caused her to flush in embarrassment. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine both commented that it looked good, but Cabe shook his head. No, something... something is amiss he mused, but then he snapped his fingers as he was enlightened. Fargus, give her a dagger. She has no weapon. The large human reached down to his boot and undid some leather ties holding a sheathed dagger. He moved towards her and started to apply it around her waist, but then faltered like a schoolboy. Ugh! Give me that, exclaimed the mortified mage as she grabbed the scabbard and tie. She looped the cord around the girl's waist and had her adjust it to suit her liking. Once it was in a useful position, the group checked each other and nodded that they were ready. A knock came to the door, and the fat gnome known as Bolger entered and told the party to come above deck. The boat was being made ready for him. A sigh of readiness escaped the quartet, and Karina followed them out up the steps. As the midday sun beat down, it warmed their skin. Looking around, they found themselves at the Channel of Thesis, a rocky formation that allowed entry into the open sea from the protective bay on which Phoenix sat. Several sailors had lowered a small boat on the starboard side closest to land. The captain approached them with two full backpacks. Rations for your trip. The town of Colby is two or three days due east from here. You should be able to find your quest for adventure there. Fargus and Sister Elaine opened the packs and found food and water skins for the trip, then asked the captain what she wanted done with a longboat. She explained that the boat was hers, and Bulger would ferry the party over to land and come back. You don't get to keep it. It wasn't I wasn't paid that much. She nodded to Bulger, who responded with a smart salute, and jumped into the longboat and motioned the others to follow him down a rope. One by one, the rest of the party joined the squat demohuman and with Karina being the last and a bit unsteady on her feet. The look in her face expressed that she was probably the first time on water and in such a small craft. Her knuckles went white as she gripped the plank seat in the center of the vessel. Fargus, Cabe, Bulger, and Sister Elaine each took oars and began to move the dinghy towards land. Lady Irena advised that their newest member that it would be fine, but was shocked to learn that the girl could not swim. Her confession garnered a wink as the mage told her that the secret was safe with her. Soon, 
So, what are you guys hauling? asked the bard to Bulger as the small boat moved closer to the shoreline. The cheerful response was a litany of items, but Sister Elaine picked up on a few of them of interest. Oil and peat? she inquired. Do you normally haul pigs around too? The sailor pointed out no, but it was not a regular item, but they really didn't have room, so they had to stuff the animals in a small composite next to the oil. He replied with the inquiry of why she was asking. Sister Elaine explained that pig feces was quite flammable, especially in a confined area. She shrugged it off as the boat dragged the bottom of the shoreline. The group jumped out and began to move their bags into the grass when the clerk spoke to Bulger again. Do you have any open flames where the pigs are? Bulger pointed out no as the small room was at the very bottom of the ship. It's only the size of this boat. I'm kind of surprised they all fit. Hell, you have to lean down to fit in the area. The only flame would be when they get fed. Why do you ask? The rest of the group looked to Sister Elaine and she began to explain the hazards of keeping pigs in a confined space when a tremendous explosion occurred in the causeway. Crouching down out of habit, the party rose to their feet and observed that the venture had blown up. Torched remnants floated around the water and Bulger stood there in shock. The hull of the ship was completely on fire and the only sound was that of the water lapping against the small dinghy. The group gazed in amazement as the events unfolded before them. Bodies could be seen floating face down in the water. Quick, push me off, push me off, yelled the small sailor, but neither Fargus nor Cabe moved. Angrily, the gnome demanded that they push him off so that he could go check for survivors. The men looked at each other and nodded. Cabe and Sister Elaine jumped into the small craft and headed out to the wreckage as Fargus, Irena, and Karina checked the area for problems. After an hour of searching, the boat returned to the shoreline with a very dejected bulger sitting silently. Lady Arena looked to the other members and asked if they had found anything. Cabe shook his head dejected and Sister Elaine held the captain's hat in her hands before handing it over to Karina. The group gave their apologies to Bulger and told them that he was more than welcome to accompany them to Colby. He could probably find transportation back to Phoenix there. He nodded wordlessly and Karina looked at the hat before plopping it onto her head and moved off with the group. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.